In this video, we'll be talking about how to teach toddlers to swim if you're not a swim instructor. Stay tuned. Hey sitters, welcome back. It's Lydia, thanks for joining me. We are doing another video in our swim series. This one is about teaching toddlers to swim if you're not a swim coach. I'm here with Amanda once again. She also has a YouTube channel. I'll put that in the description below. Amanda, tell us about your certifications as a swim coach and your YouTube channel that they can check out. I am a WSI certified swim instructor with over 10 years of experience teaching, which is my passion project since now during the day, sometimes weekends, I make vegan chips, which you can find more on my YouTube channel at Slow Foods Kitchen. She makes really good kale chips, so go check her out. So today's topic is teaching toddlers how to swim if you're not a swim coach. I am not a swim coach. Should I be teaching a toddler how to swim if I'm not a swim coach? Yes, you can offer um, some tips and tricks to get children started on swimming. And depending on your comfort level and the child's comfort level, level maybe you aren't providing swim lessons, which mm -hmm. is since you're not an instructor, but you can set them up for success when they do begin lessons. So where do we begin? So if you have a toddler, I like to start my lessons at two years old, sometimes a year and a half. I personally don't go below that. Um, but the first thing I like to do is get the kids in the water. Okay. Have fun, bounce around, get some water in their face. Um, and after that is blowing bubbles. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. If your pool has stairs, it's a great setup. Have the child sit on the stairs, maybe hold their hands, and have them blow bubbles. Okay. Sounds really simple, <laughs> but you want to convey that. Show them, take a deep breath in and then put your lips below the water and show them how you blow bubbles with your mouth. Um, ideally, you want them to blow bubbles with their nose. Hold your breath, close your mouth out through the nose. Okay, all right. So I'm in the water playing with them, trying to teach them how to blow bubbles, and I wanna make a game out of it, right? So they're not so scared to put their face in the water. Some of my kids I know are scared to um, put their face in the water completely, uh, but you're saying that you just need the nose and mouth, right? Right, you wanna get that instant reaction where their face goes in the water and they breathe out. They do not inhale or swallow any water. And then what, what do we, where do we go from there? So after they're blowing bubbles, you wanna get their face in the water. Even if you don't teach them to swim, which is totally okay, you wanna start building that confidence so when they do go to lessons, they are not afraid of the water, they're ready to put their face in. So then if you're a kiddo that you're babysitting is blowing bubbles, they're having fun, they're ready for the next step, get them to jump off of the stair and swim to you not far i mean like three feet two feet not very far at all because mm -hmm. they cannot hold a lot of air okay but get them comfortable moving through the water and they might start to kick their feet so encourage that kick your feet splash your toes get them to reach their arms out for you okay um, and that will really set them up for success so as sitters i know we make a, a deep connection or a very trusting connection with the kids and we sometimes can get the kids to do something mom and dad can't so using that um, does it help with those swim lessons or that confidence boost that the kids can do uh, what we're asking? So when you build trust with the kiddos that you're babysitting, they are often more willing to jump to you and swim. Lydia, call me, you had a great time. I, I have many clients who they just won't swim with their parents and it's just part of parenting. I don't have kids so I can't totally speak on that, mm -hmm. but it is true. Sitters have such a deep bond that children will often try new things even though they will not swim to mom and dad. So in all swimming situations, whether you're swimming with people, with kids who know how to swim or they don't, always give the parents permission if it's okay to jump into the pool while they're not home. Also make sure that you um, ask the parent if the kid knows how to swim because the kid's definition of knowing how to swim versus the parent's definition of their kid knowing how to swim is completely different. So if I have zero confidence in teaching them those baby steps to learning how to swim, um, what, what can I still do for them to get them ready for those steps? Just getting in the water and spending time with the kids is a huge step. You could do something as simple as standing in the water and having the child jump from the wall or from the stairs to you because okay. that builds confidence and trust and comfort in the water and that is really important to get them ready to go on their own into swim lessons. Even if you don't want to teach kids how to swim, cannot, even if the, if the family does not have a pool, maybe they live on a lake or a pond, even as simple as two inches of water in the bathtub can lead to children drowning. And so that's why it is so important for you to know 
one, how to keep children safe around any body of water, and also two, be able to perform CPR if for any reason there was an emergency, you could care for the child until 911 medics arrived. Thank you, Amanda, for all the great information and your time during this swim series. Sitters, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Go check out the rest of the swim series videos. I'll leave them down in the description below, along with her YouTube channel. Go check those out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next video.